Hello and Bach Humbug. I recently received a request from a viewer who just moved into her first home and doesn't know what to purchase for her first kitchen. It can be overwhelming with all the options out there and kitchen equipment isn't cheap. So I've decided to make a video for her and anyone else out there that might be wondering what do I need for my first kitchen. I'm gonna go through my kitchen and show you all of my equipment and utensils and try to help you determine whether it's something you need in your kitchen or not. I'll also try to list a cheaper version or varying prices of certain things because some of my equipment is professional and really unnecessary for a home kitchen. And the viewer that requested this video is also planning on remodeling her kitchen next year. So at the end of this video, I'll also give some quick advice on things to keep in mind when designing your own kitchen. So first off, I wanna say I'm testing out some new microphones. So if the audio is bad, I apologize in advance. So a good set of pots and pans should last you for life. Here I have three different brands. I have Belgique sauce pots. I have Emerald. Yes, that Emerald and I have Cuisinart. Now the Belgiques and the Emeralds are discontinued. So unfortunately, I'm unable to give any links to those, but the Cuisinarts are just as good. That's what I have here. And a full set will run you around $200. I've had this set for well over 20 years, and as long as you keep them clean, they'll last forever. Wherever you get your set, you wanna make sure you have a couple saute pans, a stock pot, a large pan, and a couple sauce pots. And that's it, that's all you need for your basic set. Okay, up next we have non-stick pans. Now you could totally go full non-stick set and not do a stainless steel set as long as you take good care of them. What I mean by taking good care of them is you're not supposed to wash Teflon, you're just supposed to wipe it out. Some people have issues with that and think it's disgusting, but I guarantee you any restaurant you've gone to where you're eating fried eggs or basically anything that sticks to a pan really easily, it's been cooked in a pan that's never been washed. That's just how you're supposed to treat it. Now I like this set because it has the spigots on the sides, but for me, it's really nice because they're left-handed, so you can pour it from either side, and I'm left-handed. You can totally get just this set and skip the Cuisinart pots and pans altogether, but again, you have to really take good care of these pots and pans. Never run them through the dishwasher. Only wipe them out clean. Now this set particular is not available, but I left a link to it anyway. If you go check it out, it will have links to similar sets underneath it. Now when we're talking about nonstick pans, make sure you always get Teflon. These two pans were gifts and they claim to be non-stick, but they totally are not non-stick. So I just treat them as normal pans. They're just kind of backup emergency pans, but anything that has some kind of weird coating on it that's claiming to be some kind of new technology, they're usually not very good. That's why I stick to good old Teflon, nothing else when it comes to non-stick. Okay, up next is the roasting pan. This is the reason that this video was started in the first place because she was requesting where to get a pan like this to be able to cook a Lebanese style turkey. So this is just a traditional, this is actually Martha Stewart collection. I wasn't able to find this exact model or anything on Amazon, but I put a link to one in there that's actually a little bit cheaper than this one. This one was 250. The one I linked in the description is 199. So a little bit cheaper. Now, if that's a little bit above your budget, I do recommend one of these enamel coated roasting pans. This one's a little small. It wouldn't be big enough for a 20 pound turkey. This is a 16 inch one. And I believe it is $30 on Amazon, but you could definitely fit a probably 12 pound turkey in there. However, they do have a larger one for $50 that is 19 inches. It claims to be able to fit a 20 pound turkey in there, but if you look at the picture, you definitely, I, I would be skeptical of being able to cook a Lebanese style turkey in there, being able to fill it up with that much broth. So to most of the viewers, one of the enameled ones would probably be efficient. But to the person that requested this video, if you want to cook the Lebanese style turkey, she's Lebanese. So so I know why she wants that specific one. You'll definitely want to spend the extra and get the big one. All right, on to sheet pans. These days, non-stick sheet pans are so cheap, you might as well get the non-stick ones rather than regular ones. So I'm not even gonna put a link to regular ones in there because these are perfect. You don't have to grease them. And just like with your Teflon, you don't wash them. You just wipe them clean. These are about $13 a piece on Amazon. Next, we have mixing bowls. Every kitchen needs a full set of mixing bowls, in my opinion. Now, I have stainless steel ones. These are from my professional kitchen. I've got a full set of seven, but 
I really don't recommend these for a home kitchen. You can buy them with lids on them, but the ones I really like are the ones that you'll see me use on my channel a lot, which are these colored ones. These are also Martha Stewart collection. Uh, they come in a set of six. Two of mine have some chicken marinating in them. Stay tuned for those videos coming up. We've got, we've got tahini zata chicken. There's chicken marinating all in there. That looks really good. Can't tell, but there's chicken in there. And then in this one, this is a little something I'm working on. There's been a big craze with the pink sauce on YouTube and stuff. So I'm working on some pink chicken. Check that out. Nice and beautiful and pink. Those will be my next two videos after this one. But the thing I really like about these is they come with lids and they stack all inside of each other so they don't take up much room at all in a, in a kitchen. That's gonna be dinner tonight. Now let's move on to equipment. Up first we have a food processor. Now this food processor is, I would say, almost commercial grade. It's pretty expensive, $350. It's Cuisinart, 14 cup. So you can make a lot of stuff in there. Do you need this one for your house? Probably not. I do have another one listed for $55, if that's a little bit more up your alley. But this one will last you forever if you use it. Now, I think every kitchen needs one of these. One thing you don't need is a blender. I have two blenders in my house that I have never used. They were both left here by somebody else, and obviously it wasn't important enough for them to come back for. So they've just been sitting on my shelf forever. Never used them once, because I have a food processor. Up next is a mixer. Now, these things are awesome. I think every kitchen should have one. You can, they have so many uses. Now this one is the KitchenAid Architect. I absolutely do not recommend this one for your home. Coming in at a whopping $850, I absolutely do not recommend this one for your home kitchen. I have linked it just in case. If you do get this one, it will last you your entire life. I have made over, I have made thousands and thousands of meat and spinach pies with this KitchenAid mixer. For the entire time I owned my business, this was the mixer that made all my pies. But I do have a link for a decent mixer for the price that is on sale for $150, normally it is $300. It's 50% off, so it's a pretty good deal. And if that's still too much for you, I've also linked a cheaper mixer that is only $80 and it comes in a variety of colors. That's the, why I, that's the only reason I chose that one. Okay, up next we've got a spice grinder. Now these are only 15 bucks. This one's a Cuisinart. I couldn't find the exact model on Amazon, but it doesn't really matter. You just use them to grind your spices. As far as spices, I recommend always buying your spices whole, toasting them first in a pan, then grinding them in a grinder. It'll make them way more aromatic. And if anything, at least do this with your black pepper. Never buy your black pepper already ground. And never buy the one that comes in the grinder, with the built-in grinder, because you can't ever take it out to toast it first. Definitely recommend having one of those. Up next Next, we've got a dehydrator. Now, I really love having one of these. This is not a necessity to have in your kitchen, obviously, but I love having one. You can dry meats, fish, jerky, fruits, vegetables, nuts and seeds, herbs and spices. I really like to grow my own peppers and make my own crushed red pepper because it's just so much better. It doesn't have that hard texture that the store-bought crushed red pepper does. Instead, it's just like almost invisible texture. You can't even feel it in your mouth and you're just like, where did the heat come from? So that's why I always try to dry out my own peppers. I like this one because it comes with five layers. You can do several different things at a time as long as it, they both require the same temperature. Now, one thing you do want to notice is it's got these mats here. These are for fruit. So things like strawberries and stuff that kind of tend to stick to the pad. All right, up next, we've got an ice cream maker. Now this is another one of those things that no, you don't need in every single kitchen. This is just an extra thing that I love. It's the reason that I kind of postponed putting this video out because I was waiting for it to come in and it just came in yesterday. So I'm really excited to use it. It's a two quart frozen yogurt sorbet or ice cream maker. It is only $80 on Amazon. Great deal. The first ice cream I'm gonna make with it is one that I used to make at restaurants all the time. It is a carrot jalapeno ice cream and it is delicious. Don't let the name fool you. It's the perfect balance of sweet and heat. I'll be recording that video soon. Okay, up next we have a chafing dish. Now these are just, they come in really handy for when you're having a party and you wanna keep food hot and serve it like buffet style. I put a link in the description to one of those. They're around $80 and I also put links to a few different sizes of inserts that you can put in there. This is, these are two that I purchased separate. They're called half pans, but it comes with one that just is a full pan, full hotel pan. But you 
can order third pans where three of them will fit in there. You can order six pans where six of them, nine pans for nine of them. Totally up to you. All right, now let's move on to utensils. This is a set of metal spatulas I have here. I really like these. These are Ann Marcos. This is the brand I've always used. And it comes with a large spatula, a thin spatula, and a small spatula, as well as a scraper and this is really neat i've never seen this before until i got this set here but it's got i don't know if you can see it it's got measurement equivalents on there as well as a ruler and this set is listed at 28 dollars on amazon and next i think every kitchen needs a 100 sure every kitchen needs a fish spatula and it is for just what it the name implies cooking fish. It's just, it's thinner. It has this shape to it that makes it just easier to get under a fish without it sticking to the pan. And that is $13. Next is tongs. Every kitchen should have a set of tongs. I like the ones with the rubber grips on them because, not because it gives you better grip, but because if they get hot, this part won't be so hot, the rubber part. These are $11. Now the next few things can all, can all be considered one, one thing, really. I've got here my non-stick utensils. So I've got a spatula, I've got a couple sets of tongs, I've got a ladle, I've got a, another spatula, another spatula, a plastic one, and a wooden thing. These are just ones I've collected over time. But I've put a full set of non-stick utensils in the description for $23, which is a really good deal because if you look the next few things on the list, which I think you need anyway if you have non-stick if you have non-stick cookware. The next thing on the list is non-stick tongs, which are listed the cheapest ones I could find were seven dollars. Then after that, you've got a non-stick spatula, which the cheapest one I could find was ten dollars. And after that, you've got non-stick spoons. Again, the cheapest one I could find was six dollars, and a basting brush. And the cheapest one I could find for those was $5. So if you add up all of those things, it comes to $28. Meanwhile, the full set that I was mentioning earlier is only $23 and it comes with a whisk and the basting brush and all of these things that I just listed and more. So I definitely recommend that set rather than buying them individually, but I'm gonna put links to all of them just in case you have everything that you need except for non-stick tongs or a non-stick spatula or something like that. All right, up next is a garlic press. Now these aren't necessary for home kitchens, but I like them. You can definitely mince it with a knife or even a food processor if you had to. But the only reason I wouldn't use a garlic press is would be if I have a mortar and pestle. I put a link to one of those in the description for $10. Up next, we have a zester. I believe that every kitchen should have a zester for sure. They're only $11 and you can really enhance some meals. Sauces, dishes, butters, desserts, everything by just adding a little bit of citrus zest to that dish. So I definitely recommend getting one of these. Up next, we have falafel molds. Now, of course, you don't need one of these unless you're planning on making falafel. But since the person that requested this video is Lebanese, I figured she'd wanna know where to get these. I put a link to this one for, I believe, $9. This is the medium-sized one. Or there's a set of three for, I believe, $22. And I prefer these because I like, I prefer the set of three because I like to be able to make small ones, big ones, mediums, depending on the, whatever I'm doing. I like smaller ones for sandwiches, bigger ones for snacking. And I really like this company, Paled, because they have, theirs have this coating on them. As you can see, these other ones, they're, they're, they're kind of rusty because they're not made of, uh, they don't have a coating on them. So they rust really easily. So that's why I recommend this company. Both of the ones that I uh, linked, the single scoop and the uh, three pack are both from this company. So I, rec I definitely recommend getting one of those. Another thing that you don't need in every kitchen, but definitely need in every Lebanese kitchen is a corer. These are only $9, I believe. And you'll need them for things like kusa. Next thing I think every kitchen should definitely have is a, is a strainer set, a mesh strainer set. They're only 15 bucks and you know, they come in really handy in a kitchen for sauces or anything that you need to strain, honestly. Another thing that every kitchen should have, I believe, is a funnel, or here is a funnel set that I found for only $6, and it comes with one, two, three funnels in there. Three different sized ones, so you can fit, depending on the size of your container. The next thing I recommend is squeeze bottles. 
Now these definitely are not a necessity in a kitchen, but they will help up your game with just making your dish look a little bit more fancy with your sauces. You can give it that professional look. They're only a dollar a piece, uh, $12 for a dozen, or I think it's actually $13 for a dozen, so a little over a dollar a piece, but they always come in handy. The next thing I recommend is a mortar and pestle. Now, if you have one of these, then you don't need a garlic press, but they really come in handy. And like, for example, if you wanna make any salad dressing better, instead of using salt, pepper, and garlic in it, or in anything really, instead of using salt, pepper, and garlic, put some salt, pepper, and garlic in a mortar and pestle and grind it into a paste and use that as your base, it'll make it taste 10 times better than it ever has before. And I don't care if you're making pasta sauce or if you're making salad dressing, it just makes it better. So totally worth it for one of those. The one I linked in the description is only $14, but I definitely recommend shopping around because they come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. They're all mostly made of stone. So you wanna get something that matches your kitchen. The only thing I recommend is don't get a square one. Sometimes they come square and those are a pain. I don't know why anyone would design one to be square just for a place to get stuff stuck in the corners, but they're out there, so get around one. Up next, we have thermometers. It's really up to you what kind of thermometer you get, but these days, like you have meat thermometers that read up to 220, and then you have sugar thermometers or candy thermometers that read up to like 550 or 585, something like that. But nowadays, you can just get a digital thermometer that reads up to like 600 degrees. I personally prefer the mercury thermometers. They tend to be more accurate. So that's what I use, but I've put a link to all three in there. If you want a candy thermometer, if you want a meat thermometer, or if you just want a regular digital thermometer. Like unless you're making candy or cooking steaks all day, every day, it really doesn't matter if you get one or the other. But speaking of thermometers, look what I found when I was digging through stuff. This is a uh, very old antique thermometer. They wanted you to cook chicken to 190, 190. It's actually 165 you're supposed to cook chicken to. They used to just overcook everything back in the day. Lamb was 180. Now you can cook lamb to 130. Medium rare lamb, no problem. Pork, veal, beef well, 170. This is gonna be rubber at that point. Look, beef rare is 140. Beef rare, no, it's like 128. You pull it off and let it rest and it'll gain another seven degrees just resting for 10 minutes. So, I'm so glad I didn't live in this time. Their meat must have been disgusting. Anyway, I just thought that would be fun to share. All right, last but not least, blow torches. This one is a single flame and this one is a double flame. So if you see here, picks up two flames. While this one only has one flame. Either one will work. I really like the double flame because it just tends to heat things up a little faster. Like for example, let's, let's do a, an experiment real quick. So here I've got some tomatoes. Let's throw a little bit of olive oil on there, some salt, some pepper. We'll give that a little toss. We'll throw it onto these two plates. Throw half on one, half on the other. And we're gonna blister these tomatoes, one with the dual flame and one with the single flame. And we'll see if there's much of a difference. As you can see, the, the, the dual flame is already blistered. While this one, I'm having to get real close. So as you can see, they both do the same job, but this one does it faster, more evenly, and hmm. That just tastes good. They probably taste the same though. Mm. That's a real easy way right there to get a grill flavor on your tomato. That just tasted like I was eating a hamburger without the meat. And that is all of the equipment. Now let's talk about kitchen design. Now I am by no means a professional kitchen designer. I've only designed a handful of kitchens myself, but I do know a thing or two and I can give you some, some solid advice. So when it comes to designing your own kitchen, it really is up to personal taste. For me, I like my kitchen to be open with lots of shelving and no cabinetry. I like to use my ingredients as decoration for my kitchen. So as you can see, I don't have, I have one cabinet in my entire kitchen and it is right above my stoves. So I don't even use, I can't even put food in it if I wanted, wanted to because of the heat from the stove. So I just keep, you know, 
paper stuff up there. The other cabinet has actually been converted into a doggy door. And then I do have one cabinet here. It's totally empty. I don't even use it because I like to decorate my kitchen with my ingredients. So if you want to do an open kitchen, I definitely recommend it. They, they're really nice. They, they give it a professional touch. I always get compliments about my kitchen. Another thing I recommend are magnets. These knife magnets come in really handy. And if you don't have as many knives as I do, you can hang other things up there like spatulas and thermometers or anything you want, really. Another thing I recommend is one of these commercial style faucets just because it can move around. It has a spray function. I just really like them. And I also recommend a big farmer's tub or commercial sink or whatever you want. Farmer's sink or commercial sink, whatever you want to call it. It's just so much easier for doing dishes. Another thing is your granite. If you're building your kitchen, choose your granite last but also choose it first. Never go to a store to choose your granite. If you have a, if you live within a hundred miles of a, of a, I don't know what they're called. They're like quarry sites or I don't know. You, they're granite. They're basically granite, like fields of granite. You go there and they've just got slabs and slabs and slabs out in the open for you to choose through. The place I went had six levels. I could only afford on my budget level one or two. Levels three through four, I couldn't afford at all. So I had a couple picked out on level one and a couple picked out on level two, but I also went through and picked out some for levels three and four, because if you keep going back, you never know. Eventually, this one was a level three and it was something I couldn't afford, but eventually it was marked down to a level two and I could afford it, so I bought it immediately. So I definitely recommend going to, I can't remember what they're called, like granite, I guess just Google like granite fields or something, granite store, but don't go to like a home goods store to get your granite. Go to an actual granite place, place that specializes in stone. You'll have better options, you'll get better pricing. They'll come and install it for you, all of that. I do have a couple drawers here under my stove. One for utensils, one with measuring cups and bowls and things like that. One with lids, measuring spoons, falafel stuff. A drawer for silverware and other utensils. All of my dishware is in this one drawer. And then I have some random extra stuff down here. Oh, and then I have a drawer with to-go stuff in it. Everyone has one of those. And a drawer for towels that are most of them are in the dryer and I need to fold. And I also have a drawer here with two trash cans in it. I really like the drawer with the trash cans in it. It's just nice and convenient and it keeps your trash cans hidden. And I think that pretty much wraps up the video. Thanks for watching everyone. Goodbye, good night, and as always, Bach humbug.